Pipe lining sucks, so you know that when I heard that oil paints were quick and easy, I was going to give it a go. To get started, all you need is a pack of paints. This one I got off of Amazon from a tenner. We're going to need some kind of thinning because you can't use water. We're going to need some brushes. Don't fall in love or don't use your best brushes. You'll need something that's non-absorbent, like you would with anything. Don't use your water palette. And then finally, unlike me, you're going to remember that you need your miniature. First thing I want all of you brush suckers to know, you can't be eating this stuff. Oil paints and their diluting solutions often have a bad reputation for being toxic and you don't want to be like this guy. Thankfully mine in this case, my diluting solution, and my paints are non-toxic so I guess suck away? Speaking of thinning paints, the paint feels so weird coming out of the pot straight away. It's thick and almost gelatinous in its consistency. I can tell you right from the get-go, I did not thin these enough. You'll see I'm putting down my thinner, which is kind of an oily substance. And yes, my paint does get runnier and runnier, but it's still really thick on the brush. If you find it gathering at the bottom of your brush near the, I think it's got a fancy name, like feral, you're using too thick paints. If you start leaving streaky lines on your model, you're definitely using too much. With oils as well, I want you to dial back on how much you think you need significantly. They go a really long way, especially if we're planning on putting multiple layers together to do things like a nice blend. There was something incredibly fun about doing this. You may or may not know my absolute love for busts, but I find they are an absolutely perfect palette cleanser. And the oil paints, because I didn't know the technique or because of the nature of how you move them around on the model, I found this really cathartic. So you can definitely bet to see more of this in the future, especially when I have larger models like this ginormous print. As for the oils mixing with other oils, they seem to do it incredibly well. I mixed my brown with a lighter brown and instantly was able to create a nice shade in between the two. This worked not only when creating it off of the model, but also on the model. When I painted in my greens, I stayed with the green in my brush in the higher sections that I wanted to remain brighter, and then worked my way in towards the brown shadows that I'd created. When I mixed these two together, it gave me a wonderful set of variation of browns and greens, whilst leaving those higher points untouched. As I proceeded, I quickly learned that I want to add less and less paint as I go along, especially when I'm doing the highlights. I'm finally getting the hang of this, but it's a little bit too late for the rest of the model, which has a lot of paint of it. Ah oh well, I'll learn for next time, and maybe I'll deliberately use this technique to add texture onto maybe big structures, like dinosaur skin, or maybe even buildings. One thing that may concern you looking at this, and it definitely concerned with me, was how glossy the miniature is looking. This isn't actually caused by the oil paints, but actually the thinner that I'm using. As it dries, it will eventually stop giving it this glossy feel. Speaking of drying, this takes a long time to dry. One of my friends commented, who regularly uses oil paints, that with the amount I've got in there, it'll probably take an entire month to dry. I'm not entirely certain if they were joking or not. The worst thing about this is you can't even use your faithful hair dryer to do it because the drying process isn't done by heat and evaporation, instead it's done by oxidation. After this experience, I definitely plan on spending time researching how other miniature painters have done this. I know that Marco Fruso has done a little bit of this, so it'd be really cool to check out his videos on it. I especially want to focus on the non-metallic aspect of this. I still haven't mastered, sorry, haven't even really learned how to do the non-metallic metals, but with this I felt way more confident, not just about non-metallic blending, but just blending in general. This bust took me just two hours to bring to this point. That is speedy. Now the drying time aside, this could definitely be another army painter, and maybe with a little bit of practice I'll be able to do 32mm. Think you'd like to see me paint the entire army with nothing but oil paints? Put down in the comments below. All in, I think oil paints are definitely another cool tool to add to your repertoire. These were fast, easy to work with, and they were really good at blending. So why not give them a shot? If you enjoyed this, maybe check out this video on 5 ways to use speed paint or contrast. Or maybe this one on taking more interesting photos for your miniatures. I hope you've enjoyed this, and don't forget to battle the backlog.